the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Tonight, I'll introduce everybody to a bit of what we learn in our School of Ministry. My dear people, School of Ministry, please allow me as I take a few extracts from your course content. This is God speaking. Number one, the first reason why God blesses us in this kingdom is that he desires for us to live a comfortable life. Anything that rejects that statement is demonic. If there is anything in your spirit trying to fight what I just said, I want you to know that is the voice of the devil. God desires for us to live a comfortable life. Now, economically speaking, there are four realms of living. Economically speaking. The first realm is called survival. It's a dangerous realm to be in. The second realm is called comfort. The third realm is called luxury. The last realm is called extravagance. Let me repeat myself one more time, please. That economically speaking, there are four realms of living. The first realm is called survival. A realm of poverty, lack, insufficiency, always worrying about money, stealing, manipulating, doing all kinds of things. Then there is the realm of comfort, where your needs are met without options. Then there is the realm of luxury. Then there is the realm of extravagance. Now, we are kingdom people, so our communication is from a kingdom perspective. The lowest realm and that highest realm is not for you. We are not called to a life of survival and we are not called to a life of extravagance. These two realms are dangerous. If you find yourself in a realm of survival, fight it like you fight Satan. When you find yourself in a realm of extravagance, you are losing the consciousness of your stewardship. The allowance for the believer is the realm of comfort and at best luxury. When the Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain, contentment resides within that realm. Are we learning already? So why does God bless us in the kingdom? Number one, so that we can live a comfortable life. God wants us to live a comfortable life. God wants you to not have a problem paying your children's school fees. God does not want a husband and wife jamming their head together after praying three hours, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. A devil, a demon cheaply comes in between them to cause trouble using economic ties. God wants us to live meaningful lives. There are many people who sit in church and while a message is going on, they are thinking about the house rent. Every call that comes, you refuse to pick it because you hope, you think it might be your landlord, you are ready. You, you, you cannot live and be productive under that kind of environment and mental condition. So he desires that we live a comfortable life. Number two, why does God bless us in the kingdom? The second reason why God blesses us in the kingdom is so that we can help provide financial resources for kingdom advance. Never forget this. So that we can provide financial resources for kingdom advance. I teach the school of ministry students that... Do you know, and, and I say this with every sense of respect and regard to the body of Christ, first appreciating all that we are and all that God has done and is doing in us thus far. But I have to say this. Most of the manipulations that we talk about in church, whether from women of God and, you know, people, all kinds of things, pressure that is put on people over the subject of finances. Can I tell you, when believers are mentored properly, 
in their building process they should be taught that it is part of your kingdom responsibility to provide financial resources for kingdom advance it should not be anything that comes as a manipulation there should not be anything superstitious about it the ark was carried on the shoulder of priests it will always take men to provide financial resources for kingdom advance but not by manipulation nor coercion it is by revelation motivated by their love for jesus are we learning now that means if you are seated here looking at me and listening and following online and you cannot point your resources being channeled a part of your resources being channeled for kingdom activities and let me define if you want what kingdom activities are kingdom activities any refer to any activity that ultimately leads to the revelation of jesus and the glorification of the same it qualifies to be called a kingdom activity whether it's a sermon whether it's a crusade whether it's a school if kingdom come is not captured in that agenda it is not of god and it is not worth your investment are we together tonight yes So God desires that as he blesses me, as he increases me, as he prospers me, a part of that resource, a, without coercion, I should love his house and love his work so much that I should be an active contributor to kingdom come. Number three, why does God bless us in this kingdom? The third reason why God blesses us in this kingdom is so that we can reveal the love and the compassion of Jesus to a dying world in a practical and a definite way. One more time, please. So that we can reveal the love and the compassion of Jesus to a dying world in a practical and a definite way. To reveal the love of Jesus to a dying world in a practical and a definite way. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples when you have love. Not just when you pray in tongues. The love component is very powerful. There is a dimension of evangelism called evangelism through love. That the love is the preacher. And he preaches so well. Any tribe, any tongue at all. There are people today who may never be able to help themselves. There are children today who may never have access to quality health care, access to schools, until you respond to that call. Can I tell you this? Every blessed person has a responsibility by God and under God that a portion of your resources should go into blessing people without any bias for religion or whatever kind of prejudice. You extend the love of Jesus to people and allow the love to be a preacher. These are the three principal reasons why God blesses us financially in the kingdom. A recap one last time. Number one, to live a comfortable life. Number two, to contribute to making financial resources available for kingdom advance and then number three so you see that number one has to do with you number two has to do with the church number three has to do with the world number one has to do with you your personal comfort you means you and everybody around you number two has to do with the church for you his idea is your comfort for the church his idea is kingdom come the edification of the saints for the world his idea is the revelation of Jesus as love can I be honest with you have you seen people commit suicide who were wealthy it then tells you that money in itself does not give you satisfaction and fulfillment the satisfaction and fulfillment comes when you know that it has helped you live a comfortable life that it has helped you to be able to bring financial resources for the building of the Lord's house and then to be able to reveal the love of Jesus let me add by saying this from a standpoint of assignment from a standpoint of assignment money in a man's life really only does two things 
Number one, time redemption. From a standpoint of assignment, the first assignment of money in your life is to help you redeem time. These are very interesting concepts. Why is time redemption important? Because that is really what you have. Every other thing you have is a subject of time. You can lose money and get it back. A business can go down flat and you can build it up again. But when you lose time, time is precious. Ask a dying man, what is your wish? He's not going to tell you, build me an estate quickly. He's not going to tell you, please give me more degrees. The wish of a dying man is more time. Isaiah 38, that was the cry of Hezekiah. He was already a wealthy and a blessed man. But when you lose time, everything that came through time is also lost. Can I be honest with you? You have to understand this. This is really the theology of money. Money is a mechanism that helps us to redeem time. So, if it will take you one hour to take transport maybe from a, the, a park to a particular place to get to where you need to get to and do whatever you have to do. If God grants you the opportunity to buy a car, what is that car doing to you? That car has now come as a system of advantage to your life to help you redeem time. Are you getting the idea now? Yes. If money is not used in your life to redeem time, you don't know the use for it. I'm sorry to be harsh. I don't mean to. But this is the truth. Many people really do not know the assignment of money to them. Money is a powerful mechanism for time redemption. You can redeem time. You can redeem time. Number two, from a standpoint of assignment, what does it do to you? Money is a mechanism for efficiency. This is really the assignment of money to you. Time redemption and efficiency. question when you move from one small room to a three bedroom flat does it add your size do you have to necessarily buy a bigger bed and put it in all the room but it provides a greater platform for efficiency is that true if you are in one room i don't mean to insult you forgive me please but your kitchen is right there is that true there are other rooms that part of it is even a bathroom and all kinds of things so there is no efficiency now when god gives you an opportunity to move to a bigger house where you probably do not have neighbors at close proximity it grants you access to privacy all these things together spell efficiency so when god blesses you the assignment of money is to help you redeem time and then to make you efficient if it takes you 13 hours or 12 hours under normal circumstances to live from where you are to say a part of the nation like Lagos and you can take flight by paying more sadly you see that and in 50 minutes you are there what have you done you have redeemed time but also you have helped efficiency is that true you can trek to Lagos you can use a bike to get to Lagos you can go by road the difference is how you will arrive is that true efficiency listen listen do you know why efficiency is important because it is your responsibility to provide to keep this body alive this body you see is your authorization to keep functioning on earth whatever deteriorates this body beyond a certain level the spirit will not be able to coexist again it will leave so you have a responsibility to keep this body alive and strong so that you can serve the purposes of god hence the need for efficiency Are you blessed tonight so next time you see money on your hand you get an alert my precious people who got all, all kinds of miracle alerts you see how God is helping you to preserve what he has given you if you do not understand the purpose of money Satan will give you another reason efficiency and time redemption is its assignment to you so every time you pray and say Lord help me redeem time when the Bible says redeem the time, part of that advice means be wealthy. Because if you are wealthy, you are able to redeem the time. It is true. And then to be efficient. Hallelujah. 
Has God spoken to us? Three foundational truths about wealth and the blessings of God and then we'll just share a few principles. Have you been blessed so far? Now, when it has to do with the subject of the blessing of the Lord in this kingdom, remember what we are discussing, the power to get wealth, part one. There are three foundational truths that you must have at the back of your mind even before we begin to discuss the principles of the kingdom. Number one, please write this down. Start it if you can. Number one, never forget this as far as your journey to attaining kingdom wealth is concerned. There is the difference between kingdom wealth and wealth. The difference is the presence of the kingdom. Write this down, please. All blessings come from God and belong to God. This is the first foundational understanding every believer must have. It's like a rule of thumb. All blessings come from God and belong to God. All blessings, including finances. All blessings. I may not want to go into the various levels of prosperity to discuss with you. I just, I just felt guilty that I didn't talk about that. Would you let me one minute, let me just chip that in. Uh, that there are really five levels of prosperity. The word prosperity comes from the word prosper. It simply means to do well. It has nothing to do with money. The word prosperity is an attempt to describe someone who is advancing and making progress. When you are excelling, you are making progress. It is said that you are prospering. We connect it to money today, but it does not necessarily have anything to do with money. And there are five levels of prosperity. In this kingdom, when, it, when you say you have prospered, it has to be five over five. Number one, spiritual prosperity. That is the highest level of prosperity given to the believer. Spiritual prosperity. What does that mean? Being born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, learning the ways of God, and loving Jesus with all your heart. Spiritual prosperity. For time, let me rush number two. The second level of prosperity is called mental prosperity. Have you blessed a madman if you give him one billion in his mad state? What is wrong? The money or him? That means a man is mad and then you drop one billion. He needs to be alive. What does it mean to be mentally prosperous? It means to be developed, to outsource superior belief systems. Belief systems about God, belief systems about life. Your ideologies, your philosophies, your belief systems line up with scripture. That you get to a point where you, you are enlightened, superior belief systems. And now you can deploy the creativity of your mind for the betterment of your own life. Because the Bible says, for as he thinketh in his heart, interchange for mind, he says, so he is. The second level of prosperity is the extent of your mental development. It is often said that you can never rise beyond the frame of your mindset. That is so true. I've done the teaching here. Mindsets are doorways. Mindsets are belief systems. Is that true? Yes. That your mindset is the authorized channel for God and even for Satan to access your life. Your mindset. When your belief system is faulty, almost nothing can bless you. Many years ago, I was teaching along these lines in, in Zaria and I gave a very instructive example. How many of you have seen individuals who can use a shirt, say a white shirt, for over a year or two and it will still be looking new? Have you seen people like that? They are that meticulous and then you just give that shirt as a gift to someone and in two weeks his mindset is written on the shirt. Are you seeing that now? What changed? The mindset. Everything around you is a report card. It tells us the health of your mindset or otherwise. The availability of financial resources, your relationships, 
etc all those things are mere report cards they are telling us the level and the extent of your mental transition and can i be honest with you if you want to be global in your approach if you want to be able to do much for the kingdom you must find a way of divorcing yourself from unhealthy beliefs beliefs that have come through culture beliefs that have come through your failure of the past beliefs that have come through your past experiences beliefs that have come through negative associations beliefs that have come through all kinds of negative exposure you must obtain grace from god to rid yourself of those things psalm 78 and verse 41 a very instructive scripture that talks about the limiting power of a wrong mindset yea they turned back and tempted god they limited the holy one of israel how could a man limit God? Yet the Bible says it here that the nation of Israel limited God. A journey of 40 years or 40 days became 40 years because you limited God. If God says yes and your mindset says no, yes will remain in the realm of the spirit and never manifest. Are we together? The third level of prosperity is called bodily prosperity. That means your health and your well-being. Africans, even though we thank God there is, there is a gradual health renaissance that is happening in Africa right now. People are becoming a lot more concerned. And thank God for all the people who are doctors here and those who are in the whole wellness industry who are bringing to our consciousness the fact that we have been eating death in the pot for many years. The sons of the prophet said there is death in the pot. Hallelujah. Most people have eaten themselves to their grave and God is granting us grace. There is a, a, there is a health revival. People are now more conscious. They exercise, they eat, they drink water and they watch what kind of water they drink and all of this and that is very profitable. But let me tell you sincerely, you want to keep this body as long as possible so that it will help you serve the purposes of God. If you deteriorate this body through carelessness, you will go to heaven, but you may not finish your assignment. Are we together now? A body has thou prepared for me. Maybe this is a word from God to someone. Africans interpret prosperity as extravagance in eating. And you know, generally when you come from a background of deprivation, when God blesses you, you are on a revenge mission. Now, I don't mean to insult you, but it's true. So people can sit down and take two bottles of Coca-Cola, half chicken, only you, with three or four wraps of swallow. And once you eat that, we, 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 have, been, we have been given a narrative that that kind of scenario equals prosperity. But it may not be so. The Bible says the leaves are for the healing of the nations. I leave that for you to unravel. But believe me, if you find any doctor who knows about health, make him your friend and ask him honestly for an advice. Am I dying or living? And do not be offended when he examines you and says, I think you need to change this, that or that. Three years in a row, I had my retreat and I found out that the lowest performing area in my life was my health. I said, no more. I'm going to repent before God and pay attention because this body needs to be used to go to the nations and preach the gospel and then one of the fathers of faith after preaching in a conference one of our fathers of faith drew me to his office and he said my son let me talk to you he said be careful africans kill their prophets watch your health i took that as a voice from god and as i received it as hot as it came i'm transferring it to you please learn it today go online healthy uh healthy 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 eating or healthy diet enter and settle down let the spirit of wisdom help you are we together there are people who are practically dead they are they don't receive you are talking they are sleepy you see all these these things are effects they, they, there is an if you need to prosper in your body Number four, financial prosperity. Are you seeing that there are four levels now? Spiritual prosperity, mental prosperity, 
bodily prosperity, your health and well-being, and then financial prosperity. So you see that what we have called prosperity is only one of the many dimensions of prosperity. What does it mean to prosper financially? It means to sustain the ability to totally conquer poverty, lack, and the negative effects that come with them. Can I be honest with you? It is important for you to be productive, to have sufficient financial resources when needed. There is timing to prosperity. If money comes too late, it will destroy you because it's supposed to come when needed to help you solve the problem. Are we together? And then finally, the last dimension of prosperity is called relational prosperity. The health of your relationships that God blesses you with strategic destiny relationships that give you an opportunity to express love, an opportunity to care, to connect with people, and to live a meaningful and a productive life. Because by and large, when all is said and done, it is relationships that will be the last man standing. First, your relationship with Jesus, your relationship with family, your relationship with useful people around you. Do not neglect relationship in a bid to pursue money. Many people have thrown away strategic destiny helpers because they are looking for money. By the time they find it, they are now lonely. They turn left and right. They threw away their family members. They threw away the Holy Ghost. Threw away everything. Finally, they got the money because whoever seeks finds. And then they find it. Kill everybody on earth, for instance. And leave all the banks open. What will you do with the money? Money is only valuable because there are men at the other side to receive it. Never forget that. So you cannot exalt papers and, and cards and all kinds of things more than men. That means if you are the only person of the over 7.6 billion people who are on earth today, if everyone suddenly falls asleep and does not wake up, and all the banks are open. There's no thief to harass you. There's no terrorist to bomb you. You can enter any bank and find the box rooms and the safes open. What will you do with the money? The money itself is not useful. It is only useful because of what it does to men. So do not ignore men. At the end of your life, it is not papers that you bury you. At the end of your life, papers will not walk their way and get a coffin and give you a befitting barrier. No. In fact, at the end of your life, you will not buy your way to heaven. It is your relationship. That relational prosperity is what will take you to heaven. Even if you go to hell, it's still relational prosperity that will take you to hell. Either ways. Relationships are powerful. Everything money can buy, relationships can buy you too. So let's return back to the three fundamental things that I was trying to say. Number one, all blessings come from God and belong to God. It's a fundamental rule about kingdom wealth you must know. James chapter 1, please, and verse 17. Let's hurry up. James chapter 1 and verse 17. Thank you, Jesus. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. Everybody say from above above is certainly not hellfire from above every good gift and every perfect gift is from above so that there is no confusion and come down from the father of lights with whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning so if you ever see anything good including the availability of financial resources favor blessings everything that constitutes a system of advantage to the believer and to mankind generally it comes from above the first rule you have to understand about kingdom wealth is all blessings come from god and belong to him the emphasis is belong to him that means in this kingdom owners are rebels we do not own things we are stewards please you have to understand this my money that is the language of people who are about to crash It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. 
it all belongs to you. Oh, I will tell you why many people do not secure the support of God. There is this pride that we have. My money. All blessings come from God and belong to him. If God gives you a house, if God gives you a position, if God gives you intellectual soundness, if God gives you availability, anytime you see your bank balance, I want you to know that it's only the text that came from your bank. That ability came from God. All blessings come from God. Therefore, no matter how I rise, no matter how blessed I am, I should never be ashamed to go down on my knees. Even with the designer that you are wearing, even with the jeep packed, even with all of the names, you can go down on your knees and tell your world, your business partners and everyone, I don't know where you got yours, but my help cometh from the Lord. Listen to me. We need to train believers to get to a point where they become vocally unashamed about letting the world know where their wealth come from, came from. It came from Jesus. All blessings come from God. Next time you go to your house and you see an award hanging there, next time you receive an alert, next time you look at yourself and you see that you are in a big house, a big mansion, please do not allow naysayers alongside psychophants flatter you into believing that it was a making of your own rule number one if you want to do financial business with God you have to understand that all blessings come from God and belong to him so if someone calls you and says CEO we are waiting for you and you say I'm talking to God if he dare says you are wasting time educate him and say before when i was at the back side of the mountain when nobody knew me this same hand that picked me is the same hand i remain loyal to even in the midst of the plenty can i tell you this we live in a world that will bully you into looking stupid for loving god in the presence of wealth you are in a place and your phone rings and it's a worship song. You quickly off it because you are embarrassed. You don't want to fall your hand. All blessings come from God and belong to him. So if God says transfer $5,000, transfer 1 million naira, you don't sit down binding and casting the voice, acting as if you don't know it's God because it belongs to him this was the mistake of the rich fool he forgot that he was only steward in this kingdom owners are rebels we are not given ownership now of course i know you say ownership to mean responsibility you are right so that you don't insult anyone you hear saying we are owners i'm giving us a word of caution now you will hear people in the finance say, oh you are an owner understand what they mean within the context of what i'm teaching everything God gives you belongs to him. Yeshua Hamashiach. Yeshua Hamashiach. Parents, repent from telling children, this is my thing. This is my house. Let me tell you, there is a burden that owners have that you don't have the power to carry. Owners must maintain the well-being of everything that is their own. When God becomes owner, he also becomes Abba, protector, source, defender. This is why we have a lot of balloon success. People go up and come down. Because they do not know that there is only one called Abba. All blessings come from God and belong to God. Please, when you are teaching people about well, don't just jump to business. You see, we've not even spoken about business. Leave that one. We've not even spoken about a job or any of these things. 
this is the, the belief system is what must be corrected first so as i go to work the moment i receive my salary or my business makes profit or whatever it is i am conscious of the fact that what has come to me now is from god and belongs to god rule number two please write it down are you ready all blessings come from god comma through men to men the second foundational rule for understanding kingdom wealth that all blessings come from god through men to men it does not come from god to men it comes from god through men to men are we together now yeah you have to understand it can i have maybe two or three gentlemen the protocol let's let's use the protocol guys or anybody at all anyone or maybe my my dear people come three of you please come anyone any three of you don't worry sir please come watch this stand here let me just use this as an example please you stand here please stand here please stand there this guy is so well suited let him be god <laughs> i'm not saying god wears suit he clothes himself in light no you stand here watch this this is the final recipient this is what he wants blessing prosperity increase breakthrough whatever it is god desires to get it to him but the way that he does is to pass through men so you need two entities for the arrival of anything god and the men that will allow him pass through if god says yes and this man says no your blessing will remain there <laughs> now most believers do not know this we have all kinds of immature statements like all i need is just god if you mean that in terms of his sovereignty you are right if you mean that in terms of the dynamics of transfer you are joking it is the spirit and the bride that says come if the spirit says come and there is no bride to echo come nothing will come for you the spirit and the bride says come so here we are again look up this is you oh god open doors for me and he says amen here is the open door oh god wipe the tears of my family are we together all blessings come from god through men to men your job from god through men to men the prayer point that you dropped here during miracle service from god through men to men even your salvation from god through men how can they hear except there be a preacher god is the word but john the baptist was the word the voice are we together now this is the second fundamental rule you have to know this so when you are praying you don't only pray for god alone you pray for men and then you must master like you will be learning because if this man does not like you and yet he's the one who will receive it from god you are in trouble when a man's ways pleases the lord there are men that are not castable they are gatekeepers god will grant you favor because they are the ones midwifing your blessings so god gives this man please take and now you see that it has left god but has it reached him this is why many people are you say god give me say no 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 i've answered you since i answered you since january so what is the limitation all blessings because you do not know this is why we teach things like the ministry of destiny help us this is why we teach you the systems of advantage in the kingdom that connect you to the blessings of God. This is why we teach you things like law of honor. Now watch this. This man has this blessing already from God. This man's prayer has been answered. But if this man dishonors this destiny helper, dishonor is the key that closes the door for access. He can remain five years. It left heaven five years ago, but it never got to you because the man who will be used by God And yes, can I tell you the truth? 
I'm going to say something that will surprise you now. There are times that God has already blessed this man. When you pray to him, he will say there's no need. There is enough of this already in the hand of a man. Just connect to a man who will give you. <laughs> there is no amount of money that is going to come from the windows of heaven. Every currency is in somebody's bank account right now. Every job is with somebody right now. One person's signature. Please help this person. And the person will say, it's not the English who are speaking. I have a relationship. I want to tell you something very sincere. When God moved me to this city, I was telling the dear students yesterday, I found out I may be wrong. I'm not speaking as a statistician. I'm speaking as somebody who used common sense to analyze. Can I be honest with you? I found out that over 50, 60 percent of the pathway to wealth in Abuja works by relationships. If you, I may be wrong. Can I be honest with you? I've taught you this. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter, but who likes you. Second law, all blessings come from God through men to men. All troubles come from Satan through men to men. Whether it is God walking or Satan walking, men will be in between. So whilst you are praying, I'm not only teaching you the principles that help you receive from God. You must know what to do in this world of men. Because this world of men is a mysterious world. The heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. If you don't know what to do with men, you will suffer as if God didn't answer your prayer. Like many sincere people are suffering today. The, the lifting power of men. That when men, a man steps into your life, he can be used by God to change the entire financial climate in a moment. I can tell you this. There are ministries that were shifted in one moment because the right person came. There are destinies that were destroyed because the wrong person came. Whilst you're seated, I'd like you to pray this second rule. Lord, now that I know that all blessings come through men, I ask that you move these men to my life. Go ahead and pray. Thank you, guys.